Hey everyone, how are you doing? So today, this afternoon, I passed my AZ204 exam. Woo! That's amazing. That's amazing. I did not think I would pass it. I practiced and all the tests were like, nope, you're not gonna pass. You're not gonna pass. So let me tell you how, how stressed I was when I took the exam. I was like, I'm gonna schedule the, the exam for 24 four hours from now because I don't want to be rescheduling it. I don't want to think, oh, I'm going to have to reschedule it because I'm not going to pass. So I scheduled it 24 hours ahead. And then I started taking the practice exams. And those practice exams, like six out of six, were like, you're not passing. You are not passing. And I was very stressed when I was taking the exam. I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to pass. I'm not going to pass. But I did it. I passed. All right, so let me tell you the story of how I studied and how the exam went, what I did, what the questions were more or less, what topics were addressed in the questions. So I studied because my employer paid for me to get to take a course for a certification through a company called Fastlane. And the instructor was actually very good. His name is Daniel Soto. So if you ever get that instructor. He's amazing. He did uh, the training, the, the regular Microsoft training where he would go through uh, a presentation. Then he would actually show us real examples of the services that were being used, which was great because you actually got to see those services in action. So for a whole week, I was in Microsoft training where we had this, this presentation. Then he went over a lab, which are the Microsoft Learn Labs, which you can find in the description below. And we actually did the labs ourselves too. So we had a lot of hands-on practice. We had a lot of teaching, which was great. Then the training was over and I did nothing. <laughs> well, I did something. I bought... Um, before the class, I bought another Scott Duffy course. I'm going to put the link in the description again, where he teaches AZ204 and it has a practice exam. So the first thing I did on Monday after the training or during that week, I don't know if it was exactly Monday, but the week after the training, I went over this exam and I took it and I got, I don't know how, what grade I got, but I passed. So I was like, good. Then because Udemy has sales like every week, <laughs> I decided I would buy a few more practice exams on there and I will put the links down below. Again, as of right now, I'm not affiliated with these courses. There's no guarantee that I won't be in the future, but right now when the video is recorded, I'm not affiliated with them. So this is just what I took and what I did and there's no compensation to me for giving you this um, these resources so I took those exams and I bought one and same thing I took the practice exam 20 minutes done and I passed the exam so that made me very comfortable that I would be able to pass the exam so after a week of not doing anything except like just reading it reading up on a few things and just chilling. <laughs> I decided, you know what? I'm going to take the exam. I'm going to schedule it within 24 hours so I can't get out of it. <laughs> and that was a, a great idea that I had. And um, so I scheduled the, the, the exam and then I took practice exams. And practice exam after practice exam, I failed. I failed every single one of those practice exams. Uh, for like one reason or another and it was very stressful to take those practice exams failing and knowing I can't get out of that exam I can't reschedule the exam so it was very discouraging to me and I freaked out I usually don't freak out but I freaked out <laughs> before taking the exam I was like oh my god oh my god I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail but thankfully uh a few questions that were on the practice exams came up very similar to what was on the exam, which was great. Um, 
I also did a lot of reading. I, the good thing with the exam, the practice exams I took is that every wrong answer or every answer is explained. So that means that, so when I didn't know what the answer was, or if I was like, more curious about the answer, I could go in and read the explanation. I could go in and look at the documentation. So the answers were there. And so I went through and I read up on the answers. There's things I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. So that that's how I learned from my mistakes. Th there were a lot of things. things. For, for example, uh, service buses. That's something that I needed to work on. Um, the, the difference between service bus, event hub, and event grid, those I needed to work on. And there was good explanations, uh, Cosmos DB consistency, understanding the consistency levels for data. All these things uh, were explained. There was linked to the documentation, the Microsoft documentation. So I went in there and I read up on those. Um, so it was very, very useful. Uh, I highly recommend taking a test don't take brain dumps because those are dumb. You're not learning anything. But if you do take a practice exam, make sure you read through the answer, every single answer. Make sure that you understand the explanation, the reason why, and that you go through uh, every answer and you understand why you went wrong or why you got it right. If It's also sometimes you're just like, I don't know. I'm just going to do something. All right, then the time of the exam came, right? So that's scary time, 12 p.m. noon on Thursday, March 25th, 2021. The time to check into the exam came. And that was terrifying. Not the check in, the exam part. So I filmed my setup. So here's my setup. Hey, guys, so this is my setup here. For my exam. I think it's hard to do it more sterile than that. There's absolutely nothing in this room <laughs> except computer, desk, or chair. So yeah, that's a good setup. Nothing to complain about. As you can see, the room was very bare. There was like no reason for anybody to be like, this is not okay. So not that anybody was like, this is not okay. I just want you to know that this is a good setup. If you have a closet, empty your closet, put a desk in there, put a computer in there, put a power strip, and that is it. There's no reason they would be like, oh, this is not an okay setup. Because it, there's no distraction. No reasonable person could expect could say that they, it was a distracting environment. So when you take an exam, if you have family members around you, uh, especially a child working from home, make sure you tell them to be quiet. Make sure you pick a time when you know they will be quiet. For, for example, schedule the, your exam at the same time that they have an exam. So this way you know they'll be quiet and you know you'll have the quiet time that you needed. Okay, so the exam itself. So I wasn't very happy with the exam format because it was two case studies. So case studies are the big... Uh, once there's like a huge chunk of, so here's the current setup. Here's how each thing is done. Here's the requirements. Here's how I suggest to implement it. And here's uh, a few issues that we're having. And then you have questions about how do you set up XYZ? How do you solve this issue? How do you solve that issue? Does this setup satisfy the requirements? Blah, blah, blah. So it's uh, eight questions per case study, more or less. And once you're done with a case study, you cannot go back and revise your answers. So you have to be okay with it. Um, then I had 30 something questions. And at the end, uh, there was four or five questions that were related to the same, uh, topic. So it's, uh, this is uh, the solution. We're trying to do this. This is the solution that we want. And how, if I do this, this, and this, does that satisfy, satisfy the requirements? And then next question, how about if I do that, does that satisfy the requirements? And then the next question is similar, all related to the same problem. And those you can't go back. So I didn't know that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, oh no, I, I, I want to change my answer. And you can't go back. You can't revise those answers. So you'd better really know those questions. You'd better know whether you're right or wrong. And you have to take your time on those because you cannot go back. You cannot revise them at all. So that's, um, that's something to keep in mind. And I made a video about AZ-104. Another thing to keep in mind is you have to scroll if you're... I didn't have this problem in this exam where I needed to scroll, but if you don't understand the question fully, make sure you scroll through the question. The scroll bar may be hidden, but uh, you can scroll and get more information. Okay, so here are a few topics that were covered in this exam. Uh, just to give you an idea of what was in there, you can obviously go to the Microsoft documentation for the exam and see what proportion of uh, uh, services and skills are tested in the exam. And I'm going to put the link in the description again. But there was a lot of um, service bus, even grid, um, even hub. Not as much even hub as the other two, and really more... Um, service bus, uh, queue, storage, Azure storage queues also were in there. A lot, a lot of app service, um, of app services, a lot of Azure functions, a little bit of storage, uh, a lot of code. So you don't have to write the code, but there's a lot of um, com complete the code or what needs to go there or um, what does this code do? Does this code do what you're supposed you want it to do? A lot of the configuration, so all these JSON configurations for um, roles or services, um, Docker files also are covered a little bit. Um, a little bit of containers, obviously, if Docker files are involved. Um, but really, the big ones that really you need to know are scripting for Azure. So Cloud Shell mostly, so Azure CLI, and some PowerShell, there was more CLI than PowerShell. Uh, web apps, functions, those are huge topics. Service bus and storage queues are so huge topics in there. Um, you should know some storage, you should know API management. Uh, especially when it comes to inbound, outbound, and backend policies. You should be familiar with authentication, how you authenticate, where claims come from, uh, mostly Azure B2B, so uh, Azure AD, not Azure B2C, which is business to consumer. And yeah, so th those are the topics that are covered. Um, they're, they're worth studying, they're worth understanding a lot. Uh, there's a lot of good videos out there on YouTube. I'm not going to link them here, but there's there's a lot of videos out there. You can look for all these things, and they're very good videos. All right, that's it. So I hope this video was helpful. And if it's not, let me know what else I can cover about the exam to help you pass the exam. Obviously, I'm not, I didn't go into details because that's not a point of this video. And um, if you have any suggestions, of what I should add. If you have any Azure certification that you want me to take or other certification you want me to take, let me know. I'm planning on taking Azure 400, which is the DevOps one soon. I have no timeline yet because that's just <laughs> a lot of certification to take in a short amount of time and I have other things to do, but let me know what you want me to cover in other certification video.